This is the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite 2, and today we'll be taking a look at its features and testing its wireless performance to see if it's worth the upgrade over the original. And stick around if you want to see where this mouse ends up on our cheer list. The G Pro X Super Lite 2 uses the Nordic NRF52833 MCU and can pull out a maximum of 2000 Hz right out of the box. The polling stability is quite good at both 1000 Hz and 2000 Hz, and appears comparable to Lamzu's polling performance. Like other Logitech wireless mice, the GPX2 does not appear to have motion syncing, leading to more SBI jitter than on other modern wireless mice, and thus technically less smooth tracking. However, this will not be noticeable at all in use, and I personally cannot feel any difference between the smoothest of the Hero 2 compared to a 3395 or even a Razer Focus Pro sensor. The motion latency of the GPX2 is quite good. At 1000Hz, the GPX2 is about 0.4 milliseconds slower than the ZA13C, which is pretty similar to the original G Pro Superlight and Lamzu mice at 1000Hz. At 2000Hz, the motion latency of the GPX2 is around 0.1 milliseconds lower than that of the ZA13C. This makes the GPX2 marginally faster than Lamzu mice at 2000Hz and closer to Lamzu mice at 4000Hz. However, do keep in mind these are differences of 0.1 to 0.2 milliseconds, which are not noticeable by any human when accounting for overall system lag. The click latency at 1000Hz is also quite good, sitting at 1.1 milliseconds when the mouse is set to optical switch mode. This is faster than Lamzu mice at 1000Hz and is the same as the original G Pro Superlight, but is still a bit slower than Razer mice at 1000Hz. Raising the mouse to 2000Hz lowers the click latency to just 0.8 milliseconds in our testing, which puts it on par with Lamzu mice at 4000Hz and Razer mice at 1000Hz. Using the hybrid switch mode of the GPX2 will raise the click latency by a fraction of a millisecond. As usual, Logitech's battery life is extremely impressive due to the power efficiency of their Hero sensor. When set to hybrid switch mode, the mouse can last close to 100 hours on 2000 Hz, and likely nearly 150 on 1000 Hz according to our testing. The higher power consumption of the optical switch mode will have roughly half the battery life of the hybrid mode, which is still at least on par with other wireless mice. When you do actually have to charge it, the GBX2 now finally comes with a USB-C charging cable. The GBX2 comes in at a weight of just 58 grams without the puck and around 60 grams with the puck. This is only 1 to 2 grams lighter than the original GPX. While this isn't a groundbreaking weight anymore, it's still quite a light mouse. And additionally, the mouse is rather well balanced, making it effortless to move around. The build quality is pretty good, with literally no flex anywhere on the mouse, the only issue with our unit in terms of build is that it does have a slight creaking slash popping sound sometimes when you squeeze the right side. I have heard a handful of reports of similar issues developing on other units of the GPX2, so your mileage may vary in terms of build quality. For reference, in this section, my hands are around 18 by 10 centimeters, while Eric's are about 18.5 by 10 centimeters. The shape of the GPX2 stays almost entirely unchanged from the original GPX, meaning it's still a very safe shape with little flaring anywhere. The one small difference between the GPX and the GPX2 is that the chamfer around the bottom of the mouse is at a slightly different angle. This has not affected me, but for Devin it has led to the mouse sometimes dragging on the pad when being tilt lifted. I perform alright on the GPX2, but it is not my top performer by any means as I prefer mice with larger humps and more side curvature. I would most recommend the G Pro X Super Lite 2 for aggressive claw grip for those with 17.5 by 10 to 23 by 11.5 centimeter hands, relaxed claw for those with 16 by 8.5 to 20 by 11 centimeter hands, pincer claw for those with 17 by 9 to 21 by 10 centimeter hands, knuckle claw for those with hands larger than 18.5 by 10 centimeters, any kind of fingertip grip for those with hands larger than 18.5 by 10 centimeters, relaxed fingertip for those with hands larger than 17.5 by 9 centimeters, and palm grip for those with 15.5 by 8 to 18.5 by 10 centimeter hands. The main buttons on the GPX2 use Omron's Light Force optical switches. These switches are more tactile than the Omron 20Ms used on the original GPX and are a bit heavier, closer in weight to Huano switches on the Lamzu Atlantis 4K. There is minimal pre and a bit of post travel on the buttons. In that little bit of post travel, the switch has almost no back force, so you really have to lift your finger up a lot if you want the switch to get unpressed, and that makes it, at least for me, quite hard to spam. Some people will like these clicks more than the originals because of their extreme increase in tactility, but others will dislike it due to the fact that they're harder to spam. The side buttons on this mouse are mostly unchanged from the original GPX, and are unfortunately still quite mushy. We've heard some units of the GPX having improved side buttons while others feeling exactly the same as the GPX, which implies poor consistency from copy to copy. 
Additionally, the scroll wheel on the GPX2 is a bit smoother, but noticeably less defined than the original. The scroll wheel is usable, but definitely does not feel as good as the original GPX's scroll in-game. The scroll click also feels quite dull and has very little travel, making it somewhat hard to spam, and I definitely prefer the original GPX's scroll click over the new one. The coding of the GPX2 is the same as that of the original, and is slightly rubberized. This coating is very grippy for those who have sweaty hands, but can be rather slick for those with dry hands. The skates are PTFE and have a slightly different shape from the original Superlight, but they perform identically. These are pretty thin feet which are fine on smooth pads, but can be scratchy on rougher pads. It's disappointing to see that in 2023, you still have to buy aftermarket skates for a mouse at this price point. As with all other Logitech mice, the GPX2 does not have adjustable debounce, and I would not recommend it for extremely high CPS clicking methods like drag clicking. For butterfly clicking, I have reached up to 20 CPS on this mouse, but it is highly inconsistent and certainly not the most ideal. For jitter clicking, the GPX2 is still quite solid due to the easy to actuate clicks and minimal travel. The weaker rebound does make it a bit worse than the original Superlight for jittering, but I can still hit 14 to 16 CPS on this mouse. The G Pro X Superlight 2 on a technical level is quite a good mouse. However, the original Superlight was already a great mouse, with specs that still hold up despite its nearly three year old release date. Ultimately, the changes made to the GPX2 are rather polarizing, with some features being arguably worse than the original and other features just being exactly the same. Because of these mixed bag of updates, the G Pro X Superlight lands in A tier directly next to the original G Pro Superlight. Now, in terms of value, would I recommend anyone goes out and buy this mouse for $160? Absolutely not. The original Superlight is pretty good as is and now retails for $130 new and can be found for as little as $50 on the used market. 